Good morning, everyone. We're ready to get started. Good morning and thank you all for being here this morning. Um, as we celebrate March is Women's History Month and what better way to, than to celebrate the contributions of Miss Selena Moore Holman and we want to bring um, attention to her on this day. Um, we're happy to have several of her family members here. Thank you all for coming from as far away as Florida and Asheville and there's some from Nashville. We appreciate you being here. Uh, this ceremony is presented by the Women of Lincoln County Committee, and that is made up of Eugene Hamm, Jim Black, Carol Foster, Phyllis Hicklin, Lucy Williams, Sandy Williams, and myself, Carolyn Denton. We'd also like to thank a few folks this morning before we get started. Angie Butler, she was instrumental in uh, finding the uh, a, a company that would do a reproduction of Miss Holman's portrait that hangs in the State Museum and she donated that to us and that's what will be hanging in the courthouse after today. We'd also like to thank Steve and Sandy Twitty. Uh, they donated a Prohibition Prize Medal that we have displayed on the table and we invite you to go by and look at all of the items on the table um, this morning. Ricky Pierce, we appreciate his help with uh, getting the courthouse wall ready for the painting. And of course, FPU and the Up Valley Times for, to, for coverage for this uh, ceremony. We'll be hearing this morning from uh, Brother Jim Black, the minister of Washington Street Church of Christ with the prayer. Our speakers will be Fayetteville Mayor Michael Wissonat. Lincoln County Mayor Bill Newman, and they are going to talk about the importance of women in our history. Fayetteville Mayor Dorothy Small will speak on women in our future. Uh, Mr. Eugene Hamm is going to talk about the uh, significance of the artist of the painting, artist Willie B Betty Newman. Susan Eyre Covington is the great-great-granddaughter of Selena Moore Holman, and she's going to be talking about her this morning. And that will be followed by the Holman family coming up. We'd like for all of you, um, the, the relatives, to come up and unveil the portrait. And then we'll have closing remarks from Phyllis Hicklin. Thank you, Carolyn. I'm honored to have been asked to be a part of this uh, committee and this ceremony this morning. Uh, really only because of my interest in Ms. Holman through the years and she and her husband of course were members of uh, the church that has become Washington Street Church of Christ and her husband serving as an elder for some time and she had quite a voice I understand in uh, Churches of Christ in that era and uh, just such an intriguing history I'm honored to be a part of uh, honoring her this morning. So let's go to God in prayer, if you will. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for blessing us with this day. Father, our hearts and minds are with those, uh, with our fellow Tennesseans uh, who have been so devastated, de devastatingly affected by the tornadoes of this week, and we pray your care uh, over them this hour. Fathers, we gather to honor not only uh, a great citizen in our state, uh, in our county, but as we gather to honor all of the women that uh, have been uh, such a blessing to our lives, Father, we, we ask your blessings on this, uh, on this moment. Father, we are thankful for the women in this county and in this state, in each of our lives who meant so much to us, our grandmothers and mothers and wives and daughters, aunts. And Father, we, uh, we're thankful for them and as has been um, emphasized um, where would we be without them father we know um, you have worked through so many and continue to work father we ask that you bless bless our daughters that they would uh, see look up to see women such as miss holman and uh, and so many others today and uh, know that anything is possible uh, father we thank you again for all your blessing and we ask that you bless us in jesus name amen Welcome. Good morning. Glad to see everybody here. 
looking over the the history of uh, Mrs. Holman, it just I think I was looking over the proclamation that the city and the county did for her, and several words uh, come to my mind. I think of strength first. I think of family, um, education, mother. Um, stated in the article in the paper about how she joined that women temperance and union and grew it from 200 to 4,000. Um, it also I think reestablishes the fact of here in uh, Lincoln County and Fayetteville the importance of um, just the leadership. You know we, we have uh, we've talked before about um, just the first Tennessee volunteer coming from our county and now we have this it just really reestablishes, I think, um, that back in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, that if there was a stereotypical view of the role of a woman, that people like Mrs. Holman and others, you know, broke through that glass ceiling on that and pushed for better opportunities, whether it's from an education standpoint or women's rights or voting, in order to get to where we are today. So I hope that. Um, and our younger, our, our girls that are growing up and our young ladies and women uh, right now realize that nothing can hold them back and there are no barriers. So I'm so proud to be a part of being able to uh, sign a proclamation for the city uh, in accordance with the county with Mayor Newman. And he's going to come up and speak and give you some more thoughts on this. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, there are a lot of people whose hearts and minds are here today with us to honor uh, not only this lady, but what she did and what we continue to strive for in America today. Our first one is um, the Honorable Senator Marsha Blackburn. She sends this greeting. It is with great pleasure that I send greetings and well wishes to the women of Lincoln County as you celebrate the unveiling of the portrait of Miss Selena Moore Holman. I can't think of a better way to highlight Women's History Month than recognizing a trailblazer like Miss Selena Moore Holman. I appreciate the contributions that Miss Holman has made in her support of women's rights as well as her strong voice for women not only in Tennessee but around the country. Sincerely, Marsha Blackburn, and thank you, Tyler, for representing her here today. Also, um, from uh, Representative Rick Tillis, Representative Pat Marsh, and Senator Shane Reeves, I received this email this morning that I would like to read. We would like to send our apologies for not being able to be with you today for the portrait unveiling of Selena Moore Holman. Being here at the Capitol in Nashville this morning, we are able to see the results of Ms. Holman's work. She was instrumental in getting the statue of Senator Edward Carmack installed in front of the Capitol building. Ms. Holman spent her life devoted to the temperance movement and was able to en enact political changes as the state president of the Women's Christian Temperance Union. She was able to challenge the views of women in Tennessee by advocating for better educational opportunities and allowing women to expand their place in society. We can look at Selena Moore Holman's life as an inspiration to us all and understand a problem, set out to put to work to fix it. Rick Tillis, Pat Marsh, and Shane Reeves, thank you. When we think about women, a lot of times we may think of somebody that starts a movement. But there's also those that are behind the scenes working. I would like to read from Proverbs 31, 29 through 31. <clears throat> Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done. And let her work bring her praise at the city gate. In the 1930s, 
the garment industry came to Lincoln County. And with that opportunities for women to work off the farm and to better the lives of their family came. It came first through the L.N. Gross Company, later Serban and s and Manufacturing, and other garment manufacturers to Tennessee. These ladies who had worked on the farm, the people that brought those industries here knew what they were getting for as the workers. Those ladies brought opportunities to their children that wouldn't have been able to do otherwise if they did not have an off the farm job. So I think as we reflect back, let's honor those who worked with their hands as we do with those that work with their minds and opportunities that we all received here in Lincoln County because of those women, whether they were our mothers or our neighbors, worked to make their families better off and have greater opportunities than we would have had otherwise. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Ms. Carolyn Denton for, uh, from the Chamber for asking me to be a part of this unveiling. And I'm supposed to speak about the importance of women in our future. And with the advent of Mrs. Uh, Holman and what she did in her temperance movement and led it through this great state uh, uh, during the prohibition and it became such as nationwide, that's very important. We have all kinds of pearls here in Fayetteville and Lincoln County for our young girls and women. And I'd like to challenge and continue to challenge our educators in all of our schools to seek out those young women Give them encouragement because you never know what day, one day, one of those may be the President of the United States. And not only uh, what Mrs. Holman did, our young girls of color, our young girls of all walks of life need to be taken in, find out their talents, and uh, search out those talents, and make sure that they're nurtured, and that one day maybe their pictures or whatever could be hung in the state capitol and their significance in the future is very important. So mothers, grandmothers, uh, sisters, encourage your young women to continue to be a part and hone those skills that they, I'm sure that all of them have. Thank you. Before I provide some information about the artist who painted Mrs. Holman's portrait, I'd like to clear up some misinformation which made it into print. Willie Betty Newman, at age 156, is not alive and well in Marshall County. <laughs> However, one of Mrs. Newman's collateral descendants, who is much younger than I, lives in Marshall County, and is alive, well, and with us today. Our Brad Glenn, thank you. The WCTU commissioned this portrait from the leading portraitist of Tennessee and of the entire region. And she was another remarkable Tennessee woman. Willie Betty Newman was born in 1868 on the Rucker Farm near Murfreesboro. She was the daughter of Colonel Francis Betty and Sophie Rucker Betty. Those of you who remember the inimitable Miss Susie Rucker of Fayetteville, Susan Childress Rucker, was a cousin of Mrs. Newman's. Willie Betty, uh, at that time, before Newman, was educated at Seoul College in Murfreesboro and in Lebanon at a women's school. And from there, she went to the, to the Cincinnati Art Academy, studying there and winning a scholarship to the most famous art school in Paris the Academy Julienne, and there she studied under the leading art teachers and painters of Paris. She remained in Paris for 12 years, and rare for a female 
let alone a foreigner and an American, she exhibited her work in the Paris Salon, which is the great invitational uh, showing of paintings annually uh, that's extended only to noted artists. And she exhibited there from 1893 until 1898, and then again in 1900. In 1912, she returned to Tennessee and settled in Nashville and operated her own art school for a time. She became noted not only for her paintings, genre paintings and still lifes, but also for portraiture. And the state of Tennessee commissioned her to paint quite a few portraits, particularly posthumous ones of such famous figures as James K. Polk. For years, she lived and maintained her studio in the old Vauxhall Apartments on the corner of uh, Ninth and Broad Street in Nashville until her death in 1935. At the Vauxhall, she was a neighbor and friend of the family of Miss Margaret uh, Harris Shutt. Uh, who at 102 has made her home here in Fayetteville for many years. And uh, Ms. Shutt, incidentally, is a descendant. Uh, she and her sister, um, excuse me, she and her mother were very close friends of Ms. Newman. And she uh, regaled me with some wonderful reminiscences about visits to the studio of this amazing very bohemian lady. And uh, incidentally, Mrs. Schutt's forebear was uh, the individual who provided us with the very ground we are uh, celebrating on. <laughs> Thank you. Pardon me, I was just asking, does anybody know how tall Selena was? <laughs> Do I take after her? I don't know. If you can see me, um, I'm so glad to be here. And I'm listed as um, speaking about the history of Selena Moore Holman. And mine is just a very small glimpse, and it was through my eyes. Um, good morning, and thank you for including us in this event. I'm Susan Covington, and I um, am the great-great-granddaughter of Selena Moore Holman. Our lineage comes down through her son, Burke Holman. I never met this woman. In fact, she died 48 years before I was born. However, she has held a presence in my life, and I wanted to share a quick memory of how Selena impacted me. I was born and raised in the suburbs of Philadelphia in Rosemont, Pennsylvania. As you can imagine, Rosemont is far, far away from Fayetteville. As I grew up, our family of four would make at least one trek to Tennessee every year to see our relatives. And by trek, I mean that according to its strict definition, a long, arduous journey. <laughs> we would come by car. And yes, that's a long car trip. While in transit, we would often hear stories of the many family members we were going to see, as well as those no longer living who had left their mark. Selena Moore Holman was often mentioned, but my connection to her was simply recognition of her name and the understanding of her being a strong-willed woman. My connection amplified when I was 17 years old. As a senior in high school, I was facing the daunting task of filling out several college applications. Back then, there was no such thing as the common application. Each school had unique questions they posed to their applicants. One school I was interested in, and I can't remember which one it was, asked me to present a favorite quote of mine and why it inspired me. Well, that was gonna take some digging on my part because I had no such quote. I was 17 years old. I looked at various sources and nothing seemed to feel quite right. It was then that my mother suggested that I look at a pamphlet that had been made about Selena Moore Holman. 
which included one of her inspirational quotes. It seemed perfect, and I was delighted by the fact that I was a descendant of this incredibly cool lady. That was 40 years ago, but I still remember her words by heart. This is her quote. Don't talk failure, talk success, talk victory. Fill your heart with faith and hope and courage and say, we are going to succeed. And as surely as you do this, the walls of Jericho will fall and victory will be yours. Those are her words, isn't that amazing? So those words have lasted with me and today Selena has been cause for another trip rather than trek, I might add, to Fayetteville. Thank you. So on behalf of women of Lincoln County, I would like to thank y'all for coming out today. This is the first installment in this, this uh, that we're doing. We would like you to, if you know of a lady that you think that has changed the course of Lincoln County, that has improved our lives, that has maybe even done something to change the course of the United States, we would like you to come and call us at the Chamber of Commerce, uh, maybe contact a member of this committee. Uh, we're just really, we want to bring forth women of Lincoln County that has done a difference. When I first heard about Selena Holman Moore, I was at a Women of the Way conference and a lady named Angie Gray was talking to me about a lady that I had never heard of that made a big difference in the state of Tennessee. And if it wasn't for Angie Gray, and she's present here today, this would not have happened today. And so in passing, I just wanna say this. We are so proud of what we've done here today, but this is just the beginning. I hope y'all all have a wonderful day. And again, please contact us if you know of a woman that's deserving of this Thank you. <laughs>